Hi, I'm Jonathan Thompson. I'm a food photographer and I'm going to get you started with natural light and food photography. Now, this is not an in-depth technical tutorial. This is just a beginner's guide to get you started using window light or natural light. I suggest you shoot something that you like because you're bound to be much more interested in that than something generic. Let's make life easy. Let's just go for a nice soft window light and it could be anywhere in your house. It doesn't matter. All you need is room to set up a little table so you can lay out your food photography. I'm going to be using this bowl. It has a very rustic sort of feel. And the best tip that I can give you is to get older knives and forks which have this lovely patina so they're not shiny, they're quite dull. The basic rule of props, colours and textures is to make sure that nothing distracts the viewer from the food. The first thing that I would choose would be my aperture because that would decide how much the photograph is going to be in focus. So let's just say 4.5 and I'm going to be using my uh, 100mm macro so I'm at 100mm. I'm also going to have my ISO as low as possible so I'm going to have ISO 100. Now all I have to do is set my shutter speed. Well because I'm on a tripod, the food isn't moving, the camera isn't moving, my shutter speed isn't as important as it might be in other types of photography. I'm a particular fan of using side light because when the light comes into the food you get highlights and then shadows, highlights and shadows, highlights and shadows. These highlights and shadows give texture, dimension and depth to the food. So in my example I have a, a whipped ricotta which is at the base of the bowl and we're getting nice textures with a spoon so that it's not just laying flat so we have some interest in there. Now we want to carefully spoon in the gnocchi or gnocchi, whatever we want to call it. Then we're going to start building in our mushrooms, fig slices and fried sage leaves. I've also used a couple of textiles to give some extra depth, colour and layers to the photograph. And what will we do if our shadows are too dark? Well then we need to use a bounce or a fill light. So we would take a silver reflector, bring it in close and as the light comes in from the window it will bounce back off the shiny surface of the reflector back into the scene. Now if it's a bright sunny day you've got hard light racing through your window creating hard deep shadows what we need to do is diffuse that light. The best way to do that is to put a diffuser between the window light and your food. Now we've done all the hard work, we need to get the photographs out of the camera and into our editing software. A little bit of contrast, colour, sharpening, that's about all it needs. 